Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. I know it's been a while if you're watching these as they are released. Sorry for a little bit of a wait, but of course I've been enjoying a little bit of time off with my wife now that they're back in the country. So I've, I've been thinking a little bit about the progress we're going to make here at the museum, and to be honest, how happy I am with the biome recreations that we made over here to demonstrate the nether biomes. I really like these little slices of nether terrain and thanks for all of the feedback on this including some people who pointed out a couple of things that I didn't include in these that I really should for example the fact that we need a few of the regular brown and red mushrooms here in the nether wastes section of the exhibit and maybe even dot a couple of those here and there throughout these we've also got a couple of bits and pieces to change up about the blackstone and the uh, basalt delta formations we need to probably replace all of this with one color of glass just to make it feel a little bit more uniform and yes we're going to fill in the rest of those lava sources there as well but i've moved on to thinking about the overworld biome exhibit which is actually going to be on the opposite side of the museum i think that's going to be over here because there is a large space behind both the stone the kind of natural stone formation uh, exhibit over there and the trees exhibit here what i want to do is replace the back wall of the trees exhibit here with a series of archways that's actually going to lead into the biome exhibit and much like we have the nether biomes over there we're going to be setting up slices of different overworld biomes in an area that you can either walk around and observe them from the outside or walk through and feel like you are in a part of that biome in some small way. But the difference here is kind of massive, because while there are only five nether biomes for us to really encounter, the nether wastes, the crimson and warped forests, the soul sand valley, and the basalt delta, the overworld has a lot more. <laughs> and if, obviously we're not going to include absolutely every variation, not least because it'd be really difficult to reproduce the way a shattered savannah, for example, generates, especially since we only want a small slice of it. We're probably going to stick with the same formula that we had for the nether exhibits, probably only five blocks wide and about 11 to 13 blocks long. But in each of those, I want a fairly accurate portrayal of the kind of terrain that you would find and the kind of flora and fauna you might find in each of these biomes. Yes, I said fauna, so we might even have the occasional cow or chicken in some of the plains biomes, that kind of stuff, if we want to. But most of the time, we are just going to be focusing on what grows there and how the terrain generates. We're not going to be doing every single variant of a forest hills, but we are going to try our best to include a forest in there, for example. And we will obviously start introducing stuff like Mesa and all of the other different kinds of variants of that you will find. If they are unique enough to look different on such a small scale, then we're going to put them in the museum. And for that, I thought we'd probably better do a bit of research because I guess grass color notwithstanding, I still want each of these to feel as accurate as they possibly can to the terrain that we'll find elsewhere in Minecraft, which means that I need to do a little bit of research to make sure I've got everything 100% accurate so that I don't miss out stuff like what flowers grow in the plains biome and the flower forest and all of that stuff. We need to make sure that we are accurate down to the letter so that this museum can feel like it is doing its due diligence and making sure all of the information about these biomes is well represented. And so to study these biomes in depth, I decided it was best to do that with the replay mod. I can take the replay mod around this world I think I know where pretty much every biome I want to display here in the museum is in the survival guide world and we can maybe take a little bit of a closer look at exactly what makes each biome unique and kind of almost take it in like a nature documentary sort of direction with this video so I hope you guys enjoy we're going to load up the replay mod and we'll do a couple of flybys of these biomes to look at what really makes them unique We'll start with a biome with which most of us, if not all of us, are probably very familiar, the Plains Biome. It's often the starting point for a Minecraft world, and a lot of the time you'll find that these biomes are relatively plain, as the name suggests. They have abundant grass blocks, grass and tall grass, and a variety of flowers, including the cornflower, which was added in a more recent update. You'll find occasional oak trees on the plains, and while in this example we have things like pumpkins and these early caving opportunities including zombies coming out to burn in the sun they don't always have features like this they aren't guaranteed features of the plains biome and so to make a representative plains biome i'm just trying to focus on what they do have and that's mainly easily accessible flora and the supplies you need to get your world started 
and where there are plains biome, forest biomes are rarely far behind. Here you'll find abundant oak and birch trees, along with most of the same stuff you'll find on a plains, actually, with a couple of differences when it comes to flowers. You'll also find lily of the valley growing here instead of the oxide daisies and azure bluets, along with the two block high flowers like roses, peonies and lilacs. You'll notice sunflowers don't appear here, we'll be seeing those a little bit later on. You'll also find all types of flowers in a flower forest, with two notable exceptions, the sunflower I mentioned earlier and the blue orchid which is only found in a swamp biome. Here in flower forests though you'll find some flowers unique to this environment like tulips and alliums. You'll also find lots of plentiful grassy terrain and oak and birch trees once again in abundance. Flower forests are also a fantastic place to look for bee nests if your world has been generated after Minecraft 1.15. Moving on to the home of the blue orchid, we have a swamp biome which actually has a lot of unique properties down to the different grass and water colours you will find here. There are also oak trees spawning with vines, occasional giant mushrooms, typically brown mushrooms, this kind of marshland style of broken up terrain dotted with lily pads and of course clay blocks can be found in the water. You'll also find witch huts in swamp biomes of course but we'll save those for a separate exhibit about generated structures. Stepping into the tiger biome you'll find a cooler grass colour than the other biomes we've explored so far along with spruce trees. You'll find much less tall grass here than in other biomes, although it may be the first place you encounter ferns and tall ferns, and is also the only place in the world that you'll find berry bushes growing naturally. These are of course the favourite food of the humble fox, which are a fun sight if you can actually catch them. Commonly referred to as a roofed forest, the dark forest is home to unique dark oak trees along with a decent handful of oak and birch. The deep green grass colour here is once again kind of unique and you'll find giant mushrooms sprouting up from behind the trees and through the dense forest canopy. You may occasionally find woodland mansions hiding amongst these trees although they are best approached with caution and in the Java edition world you typically find them a little further afield. Rising to great heights and cutting imposing figures on the Minecraft landscape, mountain biomes are fairly barren places, often capped with snow but usually with a cool green grass colour. These biomes are home to llamas, large patches of gravel and otherwise a lot of stone, which can often include exposed veins of coal giving you access to early materials before you go digging for iron. Some forests can be found on hilly terrain of their own and I was lucky enough to find a tall birch forest occupying this otherwise very hilly outcropping. Tall birch forests are unique among birch forests in their ability to grow birch trees up to 11 or 12 blocks tall. You'll notice some very tall specimens among the normal height birch trees which normally range from about 4 through to 7. And while I doubt I'd be able to fit such expansive terrain into the museum's biome exhibit, I felt the tall birch forest deserved a nod for simply producing birch trees that you won't find anywhere else. Once you've been for a hike on the hills, you might fancy a stroll on the beach, but to be honest, Minecraft's beaches don't have a huge amount to offer. They're basically sandy outcroppings that reach into the ocean where seagrass and the normal ocean floor generation takes over. You'll sometimes find buried treasure there, although I recommend looking for a shipwreck that will give you a sunken treasure map first. And turtles occasionally spawn on beaches, although they don't leave eggs until you start to breed them. Take a dive from the nearest beach and you'll find yourself in one of Minecraft's many ocean biomes, which are actually quite different. The sea floor varies by temperature, this one is a regular ocean which just has gravel and a deep ocean nearby also with gravel, but you'll find sand and dirt in warmer waters. Most of the time you'll find kelp and seagrass all over the place and occasionally you'll run into ruined structures and ocean monuments. There are of course warmer variants that have tropical fish and coral reefs, including sea pickles and various types of coral to be gathered. Keep your eye on the horizon and you'll also find frozen oceans often popping up 
in the strangest of places. Like most icebergs, a lot of their mass is below the surface, but above the surface you'll find ice, packed ice, and even blue ice all over the place. Some of these icebergs are even tall enough that they're capped with naturally formed snow blocks, and there are ice flows that will often block your path with a boat, but allow easy access if you're on foot. Just watch out for the polar bears that will attack you if you get too close to their cubs. Minecraft deserts are known for being the place where you get all of your sand to smelt into glass, but you'll also find sandstone lurking beneath the surface, plenty of cacti and dead bushes, and some of the most diverse range of Minecraft structures. You'll find desert wells, temples, villages, and often even pillager outposts here amongst the dunes. You'll also find an abundant supply of rabbits, being some of the only mobs that are able to spawn in the harsh desert environment. Neighbouring the deserts are savannas, which largely speaking are plains biomes just with a unique variant of tree in the form of acacia. You'll also find these biomes setting themselves apart by having a unique, if somewhat difficult to work with, grass colour and the occasional friendly llama. Still more striking is the Shattered Savannah Plateau, possibly one of the few examples of where Minecraft's terrain generation just gets to do whatever it wants. This amplified style terrain can often exceed 200 blocks tall, leading to plenty of floating islands and giant waterfalls descending from the heavens. Aside from that though, it doesn't really have much in the way of unique flora and fauna, being basically identical to a savanna except obviously very, very high up. Back down on the ground, the Sunflower Plains is remarkable in that it is the only biome in the world where you will find these two block tall yellow flowers. Aside from that though, it's basically a normal plains biome, but it's worth noting that the sunflowers will always face east, so if you're looking for one of these, approaching it from the west will mean the sunflowers are fairly easy to spot. Known for their absurdly tall trees and dense undergrowth, Minecraft's jungles are iconic and are of course the only place where you'll get hold of jungle wood and cocoa beans. You'll also notice quite a few oak trees peeking from below the forest canopy and you'll find leaves adorning the ground pretty much everywhere you go. In this dense undergrowth you will also find vines and of course melons, occasional ocelots and parrots, and if you're lucky you'll even find shoots of bamboo poking up through the canopy from the forest floor. If you're even more lucky you might stumble upon the bamboo jungle biome, a variant of the jungle where bamboo is simply everywhere and often quite difficult to navigate through. You'll also find pods all growing on the ground in these biomes, which is an aspect I often forget, but I'll never forget the fact that pandas can be found here if you know where to look, which is usually in spots where the bamboo hasn't blocked them from spawning. Often still called a mesa by those that remember the name, the Badlands is where you'll find all of the terracotta that you've been looking for. There is orange, brown, white, yellow and red terracotta always forming in exactly the same series of stripes, along with the natural terracotta that can be dyed any colour you like. You'll also find a red sand here as a unique biome trait, with cacti and dead bushes in abundance, and typically you'll only find red sandstone in areas where the landscape has formed natural caves, which is surprisingly rare. You'll also frequently find mine shafts beamed and propped with dark oak, loads of gold ore under the surface, and wooded plateaus with oak trees and coarse dirt. Elsewhere you might even catch sight of an eroded Badlands, previously the Mesa Bryce, named after Utah's Bryce Canyon, where these tall spires of terracotta tend to reach upwards instead of forming large open plateaus. The giant spruce tiger, known to some as the Mega Tiger, is your source for the biggest spruce trees you can possibly find. Sprouting from the bottom of these you'll find podzol and coarse dirt littering the forest floor, mossy cobblestone boulders here and there as well, and you'll even find mushrooms, ferns and the usual plains flowers like poppies and dandelions. Often connecting biomes, running through them or dividing them from each other, you will find rivers, which are a biome in their own right. Comprised of dirt, sand, gravel and clay on the riverbed, you'll also find seagrass and squid and salmon spawning throughout the course of a river. They're always at sea level though, and they lack the kind of natural flow you would expect from a real world river. 
frozen biomes have their own variant of river, but the frozen river is actually identical to a regular river under the single layer of ice that forms the surface. This ice will form gradually over time as you spend time around a river biome. Often you will find it in the process of freezing over. And naturally, you will find these rivers running through snowy tundra biomes, also called ice plains. You will typically find these look similar to plains biomes in their construction, but the entire thing has been given a covering of snow. You'll find spruce trees instead of oak trees. Rabbits are the only real life here, aside from polar bears. And villagers occasionally make their homes in snowy tundra villages. Elsewhere in the snowy landscape, the breathtaking ice spikes biome can be found, and it certainly lives up to the name. Spires of packed ice rising all over this biome can provide you with packed ice for a lifetime. It's also a place where you'll find snow blocks taking over from snow layers overlaying the grass, and you'll find pools of packed ice at the bases of these spires as well. And last but certainly not least on our tour, we have Mushroom Fields, which were renamed from Mushroom Islands because they had a tendency to become landlocked occasionally, but mostly found out there on the oceans. These relatively rare biomes are your source of mycelium, and like many islands, can vary from small to fairly large, as can the mushrooms that grow there. You'll find both giant mushrooms and regular mushrooms growing here among the mushroom cows who gently graze on the mycelium surrounding them. Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that little tour of the Minecraft world and in total there, with a little bit of fudging because of some of the biomes just being too similar to each other, we still have 26 overworld biomes to fit into this exhibit. This is going to be kind of massive. It's going to be probably larger than the tree exhibit and I want it to sort of wrap around the outside here and connect up to the stone exhibit room. So we're going to have to pack a lot of biomes into a small amount of space, relatively speaking. And despite the fact that some of these biomes have pretty large features, I'm still interested in making these areas maybe only five blocks wide, which means, of course, we're going to have to cut off things like jungle trees and some of the larger tree types here and there are going to have to maybe be kind of like little kind of diorama cut off representations of themselves. But I think we're going to do a pretty good job. I think we're going to use oak wood to border a lot of this stuff, probably stripped oak wood like you see over here, actually. And I kind of want to make all of these different trays for the biomes to sit in and then we'll work out the details. But there are actually a bunch of things in that little flyby that I was really quite surprised by. When it comes down to it, there are some very distinct differences between some of these biomes and I'm quite excited by actually having accurate data to represent that. For example, the fact that in tiger biomes, you really don't see all that much grass growing. It does happen occasionally, but a lot of the time you end up getting ferns or mushrooms and stuff like that, but really not a great deal of the regular type of grass. Likewise, in mesa biomes, the fact that the terracotta always stacks up in exactly the same formation is information I want in the museum because we want to be able to accurately represent how those biomes look. And so if I carve a hole in the back of this like so yeah we're going to be coming out at floor level and i want to keep this next room on the same level here so you can basically just walk on through into the area where all the biome exhibits are and we'll probably have those set into this level of the floor which thankfully here isn't going to be much of a problem because i didn't have to lay too much over the top of empty terrain and after a little bit of work this is the setup we've got i actually removed one biome space from the end here just to give myself a little bit of headroom either side of this so that we can reorganize some of the walls and make sure there's enough space and so forth so what we have here is two rows of i think 11 spaces giving us a total of 22 on this side and then the final four are actually around the corner here and these are slightly larger plots these are 16 by 8 on the inside instead of being 15 by 5 and i've decided to reserve these for those biomes of which height is really a characteristic, there are a few in there that I really feel like the uh, the 15 by 5 area just wouldn't do it justice. I'm thinking specifically 
of stuff like Shattered Savannah Plateau and Mesa Plateau, where a lot of the time the height is really important, and having that much height in such a small space might seem a little bit absurd, might also create a few issues where we can't really light the area properly, that kind of stuff. So I think it's going to make a lot more sense to have larger plots for some of these. I think Mountains is going to be another easy one as well, and I'm still not entirely sure what the fourth one of these spaces is going to be, but I think it's going to be Mountains, Mesa Plateau, Shattered Savannah Plateau, and then maybe... I don't know, potentially one of the oceans or something like that. Maybe Frozen Ocean, because that has so many different formations of icebergs and stuff like that. So I think that seems like a good choice for our fourth spot here. And at this point, I think it's just going to be a case of figuring out where each of these biomes is going to go, figuring out what the logical order for them is, and maybe which ones we want to compare and contrast. So like, for example, here, I think Plains is going to be this biome here. It just kind of makes sense to start over here on this side with Plains, but then over here we might want to have a snow plains biome so you can kind of see the similarities and differences between the two likewise if we move to forest then then maybe like a snowy tiger biome shows up on this side and maybe we can carry on down some of the related biomes in that temperature so we'll go to ice plain spikes and then frozen river can sit next to regular river and maybe we'll we'll work a little bit on that as we go but i think having those in a specific order will make this exhibit a lot more organized and feel a lot more logical and you'll feel like you're progressing through the different temperatures as you walk through the biomes that is the plan at least and this is where we once again get replay mod on the go and i think we're going to start doing some of these biomes in the form of a time lapse.
And with that, our first row of biomes is done, and I really like the way a lot of these turned out. We have the plains biome here, or bedecked with flowers, the forest biome with all three of the tall flowers represented in there, as well as oak and birch. We've got a river here, which isn't much to write home about, but I do think it represents the river pretty well, and it was our first go at kind of submerging all of this stuff and making the water level part of it, which was kind of an interesting thing we'll talk about that in a in a second we've got a tiger here bedecked with ferns and all of the uh you know sweet berry bushes a few spruce trees which we had to cut back a little bit but that's fine the swamp is probably the first place where the biome color really doesn't get to shine through in the way that it does in swamps naturally in the the overworld but that's fine i feel like we're just gonna have to make do with what we've got and i didn't want to get fancy with the blocks or anything i kind of wanted to stay as true to the blocks you find in each of these biomes instead of substituting it for wool or concrete or something like that i wanted to stay as true to the blocks as i could so i think that's going to work out for us just the fact that we've got the vines the lily pads and the blue orchids in there makes it read as a swamp to me at least uh, likewise the savannah is kind of the the example here that i feel like maybe benefit from the biome color a lot more since otherwise it is just a plains biome with different types of trees realistically but the desert looks obviously very very like a desert it's got the cacti and bushes and i did leave a little patch of stone in there because sometimes you find exposed stones in lava pits and that kind of thing it made a little bit of sense somebody from my twitch chat also suggested maybe putting some sandstone in there to kind of imply there is more sandstone below the surface and i thought that was a pretty good suggestion as well the jungle tree obviously got away from me a little bit because they tend to they tend to be quite large but in actuality I got one of the smaller jungle trees which felt good for the scale and the fact that it overlaps a little bit with the boundary of this acacia tree I thought we could overlook in favor of just having it really feel like it takes up the space making that jungle foliage nice and dense and we've got some cocoa beans hanging from the trees, some melons down the opposite end, and lots of jungle undergrowth besides. I was thinking about bringing a parrot over here and putting that over here, but then I figured we probably want to focus much more on the blocks in this exhibit rather than having all of the the other, the animal life, that kind of stuff that would, would go in here. I feel like that sort of deserves to be kept for the future exhibit that we do on mobs next up we have the eroded badlands that's the bryce canyon inspired mesa and i don't know if i want to bring this out a little bit more i kind of ran a little bit low on my supplies of terracotta although i can probably just grab some more from the museum archive at this stage but i like having these nice tall areas and it kind of implies there would be a larger structure beyond that and it is kind of like a canyon that you can walk through a little bit low on red sand once again but i do like the fact that this is a section you could just kind of hop on through and take a look as though you were walking through a canyon next up the beach the beach was a difficult one to represent because it is really just grassland with sand piled up on the edges but i feel like we did all right we managed to get a slope of sand down into the water and lowered the water level by one block here to kind of give the illusion that this is more of like a shoreline and i feel like that worked out pretty well it made perfect sense to have the ocean biome next door to it at the same level as though this beach almost sort of continues into the next exhibit over and i wasn't sure about the partitions if we should have those kind of further down maybe kind of you know actually remove that or put water in there or glass or whatever just to give the impression that one continues over into the next or if i should continue the oak wood all the way down to make it look like these are actually in individual tanks so i'm still trying to iron out some of the details here would love to get your feedback on those in the comments and of course the ocean biome just has a gravel floor some seagrass and some kelp now i realized as i was laying all of these out that even though I left room over here for four of the larger biomes, the ones that I thought needed a slightly larger plot, we have Mesa, Badlands, there we have the Mountain Biome, the Shattered Savannah Plateau, and Frozen Ocean, all felt like they were biomes that were more defined by their height and the, the, the sort of size and scale of the terrain each time. I realized that I had not taken into account one biome when i set this whole thing up and so i had to add another thing here on the end because i had forgotten to note down warm ocean which is where all of the you know coral reefs and stuff like that are found a lot of tropical fish sea pickles that kind of stuff can't really ignore it as far as distribution of these unique biomes goes because you get unique blocks there but i kind of wasn't sure how to balance that and so what i ended up with was oh we haven't included cold ocean here we have regular ocean but not cold ocean and all of the other ocean types were represented here 
but the cold ocean is basically just the ocean and deep ocean is kind of the same it's it's an ocean biome but further down you know with 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 a greater change in elevation between the surface and the seabed so i'm really not sure what to put here and i kind of want to know if you think there is anything else that we could substitute instead of cold ocean otherwise these two next to each other might seem a little bit bland and boring. We could, of course, remove that plot entirely and just lead you around to look at these plots on the back. And that's where we get stuff like snow planes. Ice plane spikes is going to go here as well uh, alongside a frozen river. I've kind of tried to compare and contrast the biomes. So the planes and the ice planes are opposite each other. The ice plane spikes gets to go next to the forest as there's a forest of spires of packed ice in there and frozen river and river are next to each other. Mega tiger is next to tiger and then we start to get into things like swamp and a roofed forest which aren't necessarily the same kind of thing they don't really have it like an equivalent to each other but i do think they they trade off pretty well against each other we also have the desert versus the tall birch which again is where things start to fall apart a little bit savannah and flower forest i think pair together pretty well and then we have bamboo jungle as a variant of jungle here we have sunflower plains because i wasn't sure quite where else i wanted to squeeze that one in so that's just going to go there as a, a variant and we also have all of the oceans, warm ocean, and then finally, of course, mushroom fields, which is the technical behind the scenes name for mushroom island biomes. Made sense to have those represented over here with the rest of the ocean biomes, at least. So that is how far we've got, and I'm fairly happy with the results. I think these plots, while obviously a bit of a challenge to squeeze in all of the detail we need for some of these larger scale biomes, I think we've done a good job, and I'm going to be working on these a little bit more between episodes. So look forward to to a little bit of a progress update on that as we move into future survival guide episodes but that is going to be it from me for today thank you so much for watching this episode of the minecraft survival guide i do hope you enjoyed it don't forget to leave a like if you did subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon take care bye for now